Okay, my friends, let's talk about your kettlebell swing and some of the things that can go wrong when you're practicing. When you're learning the kettlebell swing on your own, it's super helpful to film your lifts, film your practice, film a set of your swings so that you can see what's going on. Um, this is so important because when you're training on your own, you are your own coach. Doing swings in front of a mirror is not helpful at all. Taking a video, focusing on your movement, doing a set, and then looking at the video afterwards is super helpful. And you can't catch mistakes that you can't see. And it's it can be really hard for people to get into filming. Maybe you've got some body image issues, you're not ready to see yourself move. Honor that and also recognize that maybe it could be a helpful tool to analyze your movement and help you swing better. If you can't work with a coach who can give you direct feedback, film your lifts, it's the best thing you can do. Anytime you're filming your lifts, you just wanna make sure that you can see all the way from your feet up to the crown of the head in the kettlebell swing. So the number one thing that goes wrong in a kettlebell swing is loss of foot connection. I have most of my people train barefoot um, because I can. <laughs> and as long as it feels okay for you to be barefoot when you're swinging, it's super helpful. Your feet give you feedback. And the moment you feel that disconnection, you'll know it in your body and you'll be able to correct it in the next rep. Um, we see people a lot at the gym doing kettlebell swings and running shoes. And because they're so heavily cushioned, you're gonna have a tendency to rock across the foot like this, and that creates a very unstable foundation for your kettlebell swing. If you must wear a shoe at your gym, make sure it's a flat sole shoe or a hard sole shoe so that you can still feel that foot connection. Okay, so the foot connection that we're talking about is the big toe mound, pinky toe mound, and the heel, always staying connected. Let me show you a connected foot, foot strong foot connection, and then a rocky foot connection so you can see the difference, okay? Strong, I'm pushing down through the heels to stand up, and then here, I'm losing it, okay? When you lose it, it makes everything up the chain get wormy, okay? So number one, check in with your foot connection and make sure that is strong. Really focus on pushing down through the feet to stand up and swing the kettlebell forward, okay? If your foot connection is good, but then you start to notice that as you're coming up, you're kind of worming your way up like this. I see this a lot. This happens when you kind of forget what it is that you're doing. So the kettlebell swing is a super fast deadlift, okay? So it's a hip hinge just like this. It's not woo, <laughs> like this, okay? So we've got our feet connected to the ground and then we're gonna think hips go forward, hips go back. Shoulders move with the hips, okay? As your hips go back, your shoulders come forward. As your hips come forward, your shoulders go back. And the core stays super tight. So just like I was talking in the Instagram post, foundational movement is super strong plank alignment. So we got that core connection and we know where we're going. The top of your kettlebell swing is a standing plank, okay? So, foot connection is strong. Legs and hips know what they're doing. Core is strong. We finish the movement with the hips at full extension, okay? That means we're not leaning back in order to finish the swing. This happens a lot because people are focused on really trying to get the kettlebell super high up. Don't worry about how high the kettlebell goes. Instead, worry about how much power you can create from your hips in order to get the kettlebell up, okay? We don't wanna add any extra action like this in order to increase the range of motion. If you want the kettlebell to go higher, we've got to stand more powerfully, okay? So, we've got foot connection. We know what the legs, the hips, the shoulders, and the core are doing. What's next? Your gaze, okay? So we're approaching this from a foot all the way up to the head approach. Um, we want the gaze to be in a similar position as it would be for your deadlift. So you can set up an object like six to eight feet in front of you on the floor, okay? So in the bottom position, I'm gazing forward kind of through my eyebrows. I'm gonna keep my gaze locked on that same spot as I swing 
so that my head stays in a pretty neutral zone, okay? When your gaze is looking all over the place as you swing, wherever the gaze goes, the spine follows, and then we start to get warm through the spine. Again, not a good position to be in. We want the core, front of the core, active so that we're not doing anything weird and feeling pinching and pain in the low back, okay? Fixed gaze is gonna help you keep everything tight, okay? So, foot connection. We know our deadlift, we know hip extension, we know we've got a tight core and the gaze is down. Other things that can go wrong. Um, using the wrong kettlebell. If you are using a kettlebell that's like 10 pounds, I can say with almost complete certainty, that is too light for you, okay? If you're able to lift your kettlebell up like this while standing, you're probably going to try to do that with your kettlebell when you're practicing your swings for the first time. So you need something a little bit heavier to give you more feedback so that you're not able to pull it up like this, okay? The swing is all about creating momentum from the hips. If the kettlebell is too light, you're just gonna be, you're gonna do something like this, where you're working the shoulders and you're not getting that explosive hip connection. So I start most of my people off with a 12 kilo bell. If that 12 feels pretty easy, bump it up to 16 and see how that feels, okay? So don't go too light, that's a super common mistake. And when you go too light, you don't feel the float, okay? So let's create that momentum with the hip straightening, find the float, and let the bell float back down, okay? Um, one more mistake people often make is doing too many reps, getting to a set of continuous and going for 10 or 20 reps. When you're learning, you haven't built up the endurance to do a set that's that long. So as I suggested in the Instagram post, start with a dead stop swing, maybe sets of three to five reps. Once that feels good, go to continuous. Continuous might feel a little bit easier because it's not going from that dead stop position. Um, but we don't want it to get out of control. So go for sets of five reps. As if five starts to feel easy, add another rep, add another rep, add another rep. Make sure you're getting adequate rest between sets and not just trying to work yourself down to the bone, okay? The swing is powerful and explosive. If you're practicing it when your body is really tired, you're not gonna get that explosiveness that you want from a kettlebell swing, okay? So if you're new to it, maybe practice this at the beginning of your session when you're fresh and ready to focus and be powerful. Happy swings!